difficult times, in the challenging times. You are not going under as difficult and as challenging as this seems. I tell you, God will undergird you and carry you through the storm. The entire family. Even the, even the very friends who are here to support, God will also carry you through and give you the strength to go through this difficult time. Amen. Be assured today, God knows your way. And He understands the pain you are feeling. Let, let me tell you something. God is real. Let me just get real with you. I know a lot of people will tell you that you don't ask that question. So who is the best person to ask question? I can ask you. Guess what? God is omniscient. I can't guarantee you an answer. But the best person, you're not sinning if you ask God something. But it's just that sometimes we accuse him wrongfully. <laughs> we accuse him wrongfully. And we say, you know, sir, you know that. Why you know that? You understand? So nothing is wrong. Don't let anybody fool you. The best person to ask the questions because he is omniscient. He knows everything. He's all knowledgeable. So ask him all the question. But it's just that I can't guarantee you you'll get that answer. But one day, one day, you will get the chance to see him face to face. Amen. Amen. But he, he, he knows and he understands the pain you're feeling, the burden you're carrying at this time. And it, it is just real. And you can't be just real. You, if you want to, if you want to ball and, and, and water, because guess what? That person is close to you. You have bonded for years. You have done things uh, with each other for years. You will miss that person. Let me tell you, people, today that the God that we serve is very, very real. You think if you if you come in this difficult time asking God to asking God why 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 God said just move from yourself. It is there to comfort you, my daughter, my son. It's gonna be all right. I'm here for you. And I take it through this difficult moment. You see, what God wants for us is to cast all our burdens on Him. The Word of God declared in, in Peter that cast all your cares upon Him because He came it for you. His concern is more concerned about your welfare than you are. You might think you, you, you are so concerned about your welfare, but he has your welfare at heart. He has your mental health at heart. You're not going under. But he's here, very much here, to take you to this side. You see, the word of God did not say all things Work it. He did not say that all things are good. I'm sorry. The word of God did not say all things are good. If you go back and look at that scripture in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, it says that all things work it together for good to them who love God. So all the situations in our life varies. Some are good, some are bad. But guess what? Not all of them are good. But those that are bad, those that are not favorable to us, He will work it out for our good. So, just like you, some of you would have remembered the story with Joseph, all his brothers threw him into the pit. Right? They meant it for evil. But guess what? God turned it around for good. So something bad 
things happen in your life. But I, 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 I see you today. This could be the very greatest time of your life. If you don't throw the tongue, if you don't give up at this one. Yes. Because sometimes you will feel like, man, this one hit no man. But just can't recover from this one. I tell you, if you just trust God through this one, because this one could be the greatest sign of your life. As much as your mom is there, as much as your sister, because we have lost a mom, a sister, a daughter, a friend, a cousin, you name it. So all things work together for good, but all things are not good. And that is very real enough. It's just that sometimes we misquote the word of God. And, another, and there are other times when we misinterpret the word of God. Okay. So in, in James chapter 1 verse 17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. You see, we have to understand the nature of God. We have to understand the character of God because there's so much has been said about him. But you know what Paul said? That I may know him. That I may know him. I want to have a intimate knowledge, a personal knowledge of who he is. I don't just want to hear about him. I want to, to have an intimate knowledge, a personal knowledge of him. So if we need to understand his nature, understand his character because a lot of things that has been said about God doing these things is not God a lot of things that we have hold God to account God has not done these things let me tell you something the very when you get back to the book of Genesis and you see when God created everything, God said that it was what? Good. So everything is good or was good and is still good. He has never mentioned anything about being bad. But you know what? Did you know that man was king of this earth? Man was king of this earth. God gave man dominion and authority. When God gives you something, he doesn't take it back. Unlike some people will tell you that, you know, you know, say God give up on you, God don't even know. Say, you're a, that, that's a lie. I will not accept that. I will not accept that. The God that we serve is love, is unconditional. God is not like, you and me. God is not a man that he should love. He said, I have loved you with an everlasting love. And with loving kindness, I have drawn you unto me. I will never leave you, never forsake you. Let me tell you. Tell me one sin that you can commit. That can cause God not to love you. Did you know that Jesus Christ died for sinners? Some people will even go as far and tell you that you know that God doesn't answer sinners' prayer? Where did you get it from? Yes, you get it from the Bible. When you're reading, when you're reading the Bible, you must read it in context. There are several persons speaking in the Bible. There are times when the devil is speaking. Did you know that? Go back and read the Bible. I, you have never heard the devil speaking in the Bible? There are times when Jesus is speaking. There, there are times when David is speaking. There are times when Moses is speaking. And guess what? 
the one that so many people quote that God doesn't answer sinners prayer. It was a blind man. He had not had a relationship with Jesus Christ. It was after he had. It was after he met Christ. His life was transformed. So before he said that God doesn't answer sinners prayer. So that didn't come from Jesus. So when we read, we must read things in context to have a better understanding. So suppose the devil says something in the, in the Bible, the devil said to eat that. Is that God? Is that something coming from God that God wants us to, to follow? No. The devil is speaking. So you have to put things into context so, to, so as to have a better understanding. And what we am I here is that we said that we want to have a better understanding of who God is. Understanding his character and his nature. That is all good. He has your back. He means you the best. There's nothing, there's no bad in his intention for you. It is all good. You cannot do nothing. You cannot do nothing. I challenge anyone of you here. Nothing that you can do to stop God from loving you. The only thing is that he has given you the freedom of choice. He can't make a decision. You have to love him for yourself. He can't force you to love him. Because that wouldn't be love. If I put a gun, if I see a beautiful lady, I put a gun to her, that's it, marry to me. She's going to say, yes, 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 right now, right now. Because uh, she's forced. But probably, probably if, I, if I just walk up and say, hey, hey yes, there's no some love now. Why are you married to me now? She has said, move from your seat, you're up there Why? She has that freedom. She has that freedom. She feel, she isn't feeling that freedom to express how she feels, our genuine feeling. You understand? So I'm just saying that we need to understand. Because if we don't understand, I'm coming down, the character and the nature of God that is intention towards me. Jeremiah 29 will help you to understand. He said, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans of peace and not evil. Where did you get that, where did, where did you get that evil plan from? That's the, that's, the, that's not the one I have for you. The devil has an evil plan for our lives. All of us here. But I don't have an evil plan for you, my daughter, my son. I have a good plan. I have a plan to prosper you, to give you a hope, to give you a future, and expect it. And he said, when you shall have seen me with all your heart, you will find me. That's Jeremiah 29, verse 11 to 14. You can read it when you get some time. Just know my plan. There's nothing bad in his intention. He has your back. He wants the best for you. When everybody has given up on you, when everybody has given up on you, because I guess what? Then they're not still stop, stop smoking yet, so they give up on you. Then they still stop drinking yet. But let me tell you something. That person you see smoking right now, that person you see drinking right now, could be one of the most and the greatest person. I tell you. God has a good intention and a good plan for that individual. Don't give up on anybody. Don't let anybody write you. Some of you are familiar with football. You, you would have seen, seen the World Cup the other day. Everybody saw how oh, 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 Argentina lost their first match. Some wrote up Argentina. Some, some person. I can see now. See now. Argentina is going home with the World Cup tomorrow. I know somebody is going to scold me now. <laughs> okay, that was just a little football team. But I'm just saying, we can learn something from that. See, they are not all the way into the final. Don't come to anybody. Don't write off anybody. And if you are facing the most challenging moment in your life, don't write off yourself. Tell yourself, say, God is with me, and I'm going to make it through this difficult moment. So many of the good things that your spouse is there to encourage you, to comfort you, and to strengthen you through this difficult time. And we appreciate families and friends, sisters, siblings are there with that encouraging word. I bless you. I'm coming home. I'm coming home. I promised my that my wife was asking me, oh, I'm going to spend half an hour. I don't know. I'm 15 minutes of it. 
Is there any, is there any tax collector come on? Let me tell you, you have to understand who's a tax collector. Remember, you know, tax collector in those days, Rome ruled there. So Rome took over Israel, took over Jerusalem. Just like how you have the, 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 the British rule, um, the common all other commonwealths. You are the our nation, so to speak. So they took over Jamaica. So, so Rome ruled there at that time. So when they took over um, Israel, Jerusalem in particular, they used the very old Israelites or Jewish people to collect tax. So you know those people were hated because me can't believe say, me and you from Israel and you team up with the, with the people from Rome and they collect tax from me. So guess what? The, the people them hated them. Hated them like poison. So you can imagine Who's a, tax, who, who, who's a tax collector? So you hear the Pharisees pray, is there any kind of tax collector? You see, when the tax collector comes, everybody looks down for him and scorn him. People don't like him. When the man go up there, you know what the man do? The man says, the, <laughs> the man not even lift up him eyes to heaven. He smote his breast and said, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. That's the best prayer you could pray. Where the blood said, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He said, if any man says he has not sinned, the truth is not in him, and he makes God a liar. Because the only one reason why Jesus came, he came for sinners. Let me tell you something. Jesus loves sinners. Jesus didn't come to call righteous people. Because, let me tell you the truth, our self-righteousness can't cut it. So, what Jesus wants us to do is to depend on his righteousness. So, whether I get it right, some days I get it right, some days I don't. I'm talking about me now. Some days I don't get it right. You know what? So, whether me get it right or me don't get it right, every day I get up and say, uh, and say I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You know what 2 Corinthians 5 21 tells me? He made him that God made Jesus who knew no sin to become sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God. It has nothing to do with David. It all has to do with Jesus Christ and what he has done. Let me tell you something. Salvation has nothing to do with any one of us here. It all has to do with Jesus Christ. He did it all. Jesus took your place. He took my place. I should have died. You should have died. But he took my place. He took our place. God made him. Because none of us here, um, we were qualified. To become the sin offering. Jesus became the sin offering. Oh, let me tell you why God is not going to accept your, your self-righteousness. So don't, 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 we can't hype up on people and because we go to church and we do this. When you see somebody out there and them drinking and them might be smoking or doing something, hey, just remember where you come from now. Just remember where you're coming from now. I say, oh my God, there's good, there goes David and it not been for God. God, remember that young man. Remember that lady, God. If you can turn my life around, you can do it for her. Come on, we have to come out of this eye. And let me tell you, our, our, our we church people make, 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 make people out here think say salvation art. Salvation is not hard. Because salvation has nothing to do with any of one of us church people. I tell you, straight up. It all has to do with Jesus. It's what Jesus has done. It's Jesus' righteousness. To get it, you know? In other words, Jesus has cheered. Come here quickly, please. Uh, if you two more minutes, uh, close. So uh, you stand right here. So, so, so what Jesus actually did is that He traded places with me. He took my place. So it was a divine exchange. So all the bad things, the unrighteousness, all the sin, He took my sins and all His righteousness. I receive it. Did you know that when Jesus went to the cross and took on the sins of the world for the very 
first time God turned away his face. He said, my father, why hast thou forsaken me? For the very first time, why? God cannot deal with sin. And for the first time, because he took our place to become the, 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 um, the sacrifice for sin. So guess what? Only Jesus will appease the wrath of God. God was wrought with sin. So guess what? You don't have to send yourself to condemn yourself because you commit sin. I mean, you, 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 you are a sinner. There is hope for you because God has made provision so that you can have that divine exchange. You can take on the righteousness of Jesus. You can now become the righteousness of God because of Jesus Christ. Jesus took my place. Get to know your God today. You all no grudges against you. No ill will. His intention is all good towards you. He has no desire to sink you. So if you hear a voice saying, because we do that, you know something, because we do that, and that's why, that's not God. That's not God. So everybody who are here, your advice, no. I said, you know, Sam, because you do that, and that's why that happened to you. I want you even right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, I silence, in the mighty name of Jesus, I silence every negative voice that is played in my mind. Come on, say that. In the mighty name of Jesus, I silence every negative voice that is played in my mind. Because that's a God. He has a good plan. People of God, we serve a wonderful, beautiful, caring God who sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to die. St. John 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but shall not everlasting life. Praise God. I close today and to let you know that salvation is not hard. And wherever you are, you don't even have to come to an altar. You can be under a tree. My friend was, was at um, Pali Royal in Kingston at the ninth floor. And he said he heard a voice say, just suppose Jesus should come right now, what would happen to you? He said he grabbed his girlfriend and he walked out. Jesus is everywhere. God is everywhere. Don't let people put God into a box. He's everywhere. You're in your car, you can talk to him. When you're going out and you're, 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 you're job each day, talk to him. He loves you and he's there. And if you're here today, you don't have to come forward unless you want to. But if you want to accept Jesus Christ, as your personal Lord and Savior. You can just indicate that. Sir, I would love for you to pray for me. But you, you might not have to come up here. But I will just pray that right where you're sitting, Jesus can just come into your heart as you open your heart. Salvation is by faith. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you today, mighty God. I thank you that you love your people, you care for them. God, it is not your desire that your people should walk in condemnation. You said in your word that the, the thief come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. You want to destroy your people with condemnation and negative thoughts and lies and to tell them that you don't care about them and you have given up on them. You have not given up on anyone in this place right here today. And you love them passionately and you're deliberate as it relates to your love. You are purposeful and your love is unconditional, mighty God. You, 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 you do not depend on us to get it right before you love us. You said in your word, why we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So even today, Father, I ask you that your people's heart will be open. And mighty God, every distorted view of who God is, 
And what the enemy has, has, has lies that the enemy has sold on you that you are the one who did all these bad things. Mighty God, rebuke those thoughts from their mind, even right now, mighty God. Bring comfort and strength, even now, mighty God, as they go through, your people go through their difficult time. But Father, I pray most importantly that they will come to know you and accept you as their personal Lord and Savior. Bless each and every one. Minister to the heart of your people. But those who might not be feeling well, touch their bodies in the mighty name of Jesus. By Jesus' strike, you are healed. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. God bless you. Now I'm over to the mother. Yes, we thank and pray to each and every one that in this church today. And give thanks and praise to the lady that died. That's why I asked to do that. And each and every one that is on this earth was always thinking of God and doing good and touch the dead already gone already. And we here giving good talk about her. Because she's a good lady. I used to cook for them and I used to do lots of good things for them. And I feel for them to the death of my heart. Because it's a heart carry on. If you have bad heart, you can never live. And if you have good thought, God will spare the time to give the good heart. So give thanks and praise to each and everyone that gather here. Look to Sister Sharon. She's a beautiful girl. I used to cook and rally around me. That's why I'm here. So Father God, touch each and every one in the body corner we head today to the soul of the world. And that's all I have to say to all of you family that we have around me. Give thanks and praise to God, for there is a God. And I bless and keep each and everyone that gather here to look around him and can get back life now. Because life won't. And when there is life, there is life. So give thanks and praise to the Holy Spirit God. And that I have to say today and give thanks and praise to me. Because I really sick and do two years in a case. Amen. I was in a life machine for more than 10 years. Dear God, everybody didn't know what I'm going to die. But God never ready for me. So yes. I died. I was here. Can come talk with you. So give thanks and praise to each and every one. Praise God. Talk you from the corner of your head, Father God, to the soul of your feet that you want, God. And give thanks and praise. Thank you, sir. And thank you, Sister Sharon. Thank you, Pastor Seabright, for that wonderful message. Um, before we continue the program, we're just asking Ryan McConnor to please come with his tribute. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you. Um, O'Connor is the last name. It's the same family. Last name is just last name, but it's the same family. It's one family. Um, to be honest with you all, um, I never believed that she did until this year today. To tell you how shocking it was to me. It's like everybody tells me that she did, but I never believe until we come this morning I really look for her. Um, Something, something different just touched my heart, you know. Um, so I'm going 
2002 sa ako anin pa sa 3 years after my doctorate which is not a, um, 10 years now I'm not an attack sad to say because of foolishness I'm a thing anti-share and passing I still have to come up here and say this um, nobody is perfect but sometimes we have to take time out to a show love to each other We are a big family, very, very big family. This is just a quarter of us that is here. And to be honest with you all, um, Nikki and Dian can talk about me and Auntie Sharon and Nikki know that coming from town and always Auntie Sharon yeah, need it. Uh, baby I grew up. I'm a little bit of a page I grew up. Auntie Sharon yeah, me always there. Other aunties are there, but I want you to always there. Yeah, true. Auntie Evelyn, from one year to the next year, cross the road. But, um, nobody come up and say something good. Sometimes you come on a funeral and people talk one million good things about a person. But may I be one million and one? Because if we tell the truth, if you're anybody in this family wish to tell the truth, she was always a peacemaker. She was always the one who always said, No, make me do it away here. No, make me talk over this. Even when she knows I never said no, she still called me and said, Look here, man, make that one. Make me do it away here. I think if we use this passing today, everybody, even myself too, we'll take the time out. I move everything that passed in the past, put it behind us, and move together as a family, like everybody. I got three kids. How much of my family don't always know the children? I have so much cousins. We get so much kids, so much generation of kids. Can they have foreigners walk past each other and know their family? Can they have Kingston and walk past each other and know their family? Can they have some writers that walk past each other and know their family? To say this and to say that, let us not use our passing as a sadness, but as a new birth of life for everybody, the family itself. No last name but family. Everybody that is here as a cousin, a sister, a nephew, an uncle. I love my family, I love my kids. I look on Auntie Sharon and I say, I look on them and Auntie Sharon and I say, 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 But, Pastor said just now, God never turned him back on nobody. He never said nobody because he was a sinner, he don't welcome you, he don't tell you something good. The word is always be the word. If you believe in God, that is what I have every single day. Anything you have to do with money, that you always want. But a true family is always the testimony. So my this is said today, let us use today. Now that's just a farewell speech from the share, but a rebirth of the family. Everybody over there, we take this day, we take the time out. Give God praise and continue prayer. Have a good day, everybody. That was very beautiful, Ryan. I hope everyone was taking a stock and taking something out of it for themselves. I know I was. So I hope everybody else was as well. Wonderful. Thank you for that encouragement. Um, we're coming down, we're coming down, we're going, as, as you look at your program, you'll see we have a hymn, and it says, what a wonderful savior is Jesus my Lord. I'm going to call back David, or any singer in this house, I think Bossy Gong, um, Bossy Gong, not a beautiful singer, um, but that can come and help us sing this song. Someone's coming? Okay.
Sharing poor children were her world. They were her number one priority. She always made sure that they were never lacking of anything. She moved heaven and earth to make certain that they were taken care of. Sharon got baptized in the Sablamar Seventh-day Adventist Church. She loved God and her Bible. Her relationship with God was admirable to those around her. Her favorite Bible scripture was Psalm 71. Sharon was very hardworking. She was a homemaker, an entrepreneur, along with many other professions. Sharon owned her own restaurants, with, rest, sorry, restaurant, where she made the most mouth-watering dishes. After a few years of running the restaurant, she decided that she wanted to venture out into another career path. The field of interior designer, design, sorry, piqued her interest. So she attended interior design school and obtained a certificate in interior decorating. Sharon enjoyed reading, singing. Singing one would say she loved dancing. Sharon is remembered by her family for always being the life of the party. She was, very, she was a very happy person, always joking around, always dancing, loved singing. Growing up, she wanted to be a singer. She would pretend that the broom was her microphone and she would sing her heart out. You always, you are always going to have a great time when you're in her company. After the passing of her husband, Sharon migrated to the island of Bahamas for a year of residing there. She took her young son, Javar, there to live with her. She made a home for both of them there. Sharon got sick in 2018 and migrated to the United States where she lived with her daughter, Nicole in Maryland. Sharon did not like sitting around without working, so as soon as her health improved, she resumed working. After some time of being there, Sharon's health started to deteriorate again, so she told her daughter that she wanted to return home to Jamaica so that she could spend time with the rest of her family before she passed away. This was a difficult decision for Nikki sorry, Nicole, to make, but she, nonetheless, she decided to honor her mom's wishes and she returned home to Jamaica where she resided with her son, Javar. Sharon had opportunity to spend quality time with her family. Though she was not the best, she was not her best physically, mentally, or emotionally. She, had, she was always in good grace, laughing, talking, and being the jovial person that she always was. She would often express how sick she was feeling. On November the 12th, 2020, her illness became more severe and she was taken to the South Lamar Hospital by her daughter, Diana Jones, where she was admitted. Sharon died one week later in the arms of her, in the arms of her daughter, Diane, Diana Jones. Sharon dies minutes after her family left her at the hospital with some being on the video call. So she was surrounded by love. Sharon survived by her four children, Nardo Grant, Diana Jones, Nicole Jones, Javar Williams, her grandchildren, her great-grandchildren, her parents, Ezra, Yurselin McGregor, her three sisters, two brothers, host of niece, nephews, and cousins. <clears throat> Don't think Sharon has gone away. <coughs> Sorry. Her journey just began. Life holds so many facets. This earth is only one. Just think of her as resting from the sorrows and the tears. Sorry. <clears throat> Just think of her as resting from the sorrow and the tears in a place of warmth and comfort where there are no days and years. Think how she must be. <clears throat> okay, let me just tell my wife here. 
speak or she must be wishing that we could know today how oh, nothing but our sadness can really pass away. And think of her as living in the hearts of those she touched. For nothing love is everlasting. Let me read that again. For nothing love is everlasting. And she was loved so much. The family of Sharon Williams would like to thank you all for your love and comfort during our most difficult time. God bless you. scriptures for my sisters. <clears throat> it is 2 Corinthians 1 verses 3. It says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. For the more we suffer for Christ, the more God will show, shower us with his comfort through Christ. Even when we are weighed down with trouble, it is for your comfort and salvation. For when we ourselves are comforted, we will certainly comfort you, and then you can patiently endure the things we suffer. We are confident that as you share in our suffering, you also share in the comfort God gives us. We think we think you ought to we think you ought to know, dear brothers and sisters, about the trouble we went through in the province of Asia. We were crushed, overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure, and we thought we would never live through it. In fact, we expected to die. As a result, we stopped relying on ourselves and learning to rely only on God who raised the dead. I just want to encourage you this afternoon is that your hope is in God. See, there's a point in our lives when we have to get to the place where we recognize that as humans, we are not sufficient enough that we cannot do it on our own. And even though you may have friends and family members around you, that will never be enough because you can be in a room filled of a lot of people and still feel lonely, and still feel that you're not loved. But then Paul says that we were at the point of death, that there are times in your lives when you're going to feel like you want to die that you do not want to live. But he says, this point, when you get to that place in this life, just remember, stop relying on yourself and choose to rely on God. Choose to trust him in this time. Choose to know that he's there for you and he has your back and that he will rescue you in the time of difficulty. See, all of us here, we will leave. But the one person that will continue to stay is God. Because he promised in your words that he will never leave you. And he will never forsake you. And God is not a man that he shall lie. And I promise you, I promise you, if you put your trust in him, that all the difficulties that you're facing with losing your mother, with losing your father, with all the other personal issues that you may have within your lives, God will see you through. He will become your joy in the midst of trouble. He will become your peace, and he will give you overwhelming victory. I just wanted to say that and share that with them. All right, so we are the, we're going to be praying for the family, so I'm asking only the family member to stand.
Hallelujah. We will pray for them. Father, we place this family before you, mighty God. Father, you know the, tr the trials, the struggles, mighty God, that they're facing at this time. You know, mighty God, the pain, mighty God, that uh, they feel at the loss of their mother. And not only that loss, but the, also the pain of losing their brother as well. But we thank you that you said in the scriptures, mighty God, that you're the God of all comfort. And I thank you, oh great God, that in the time of difficulty, in the time of struggle such as this, you will comfort them. I thank you that you will undergirdle them, mighty God. I thank you that you will be a place of refuge for them, mighty God. The scripture says the righteous run in and they are saved, mighty God. So I pray over their mind. I pray over their hearts. I pray over their spirit, mighty God. And I pray that you will continually carry them and keep them, mighty God, in this season of their lives, mighty God. I thank you that you said weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. I thank you that God, they will laugh again. They will feel joy again, mighty God. And I thank you, oh great God, that you, oh great God, is going to give them strength when they are weak, mighty God. So keep this family. God, join them together with like a cord that cannot be broken, mighty God. Oh God, let them become one, mighty God. Let them care for each other's needs, mighty God. And I pray, oh great God, that you will be with them, oh mighty God, in every situation, mighty God, and you will be with them, mighty God. And you will continuously keep them, Father. I thank you for the strength you will give for every day. I thank you for the love you will give, and I thank you for the grace that you will continue to give them, mighty God. So I bless you and I thank you in Jesus' name. All right, so we're come to the end of our program for this evening, this afternoon, and we're going to be doing the recessional. So I'm going to ask everyone, friends and families here, before I'm asking no one to leave the room, we're asking the pallbearers to please get yourself ready. All the pallbearers. I love you, mommy. And I'm going to miss you. Auntie Angela is here. I love you. I love you, mommy. You're so beautiful, my beautiful sister. Yes, you are. As always, you're the prettiest one. <laughs> <laughs> My beautiful, beautiful sister. The prettiest one of all. I love you so much. And she will always love you.
Tell me, baby. Let me 
Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, and for that they may rest from their labors, from their deeds. Sorry, for their deeds follow them. Lo, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. 
for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we shall be changed. For this perishable nature must put on imperishable and this mortal nature must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable and the mortal put on immortality, then shall come to pass a saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy victory? O death, where is thy sting? Thanks be to God who give us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let not your heart be troubled. He believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. And I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Amen. I'm going to be asking um, for a cooperation. I don't know if if um, you will join us in singing. I would want the bands to sing while the workmen are doing their thing. Bands, bands. So, Bandsman, your time. Let go with him. Look for your gun, Madam Slipper. The workmen can you can proceed. Proceed.
Bunny. You need now or do you nothing? Don't put this at the bottom or put this at the top right here? Put this at the top right here. Oh, the one over the top of Oh, so we can put that one there. Mama yeah. said that I said. Yeah, the pink one can go right there. Okay, okay, man. Yeah. 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 Yeah.